Man, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of EOS. It's 1090 Jake, man. I'm rocking with Charlotte. Y'all rocking with me. And for this video, I'm going to be speaking on the softest killer I ever met inside a prison. I'm going to be speaking on none other than Harry Potter. Ow! Ow! A little help. And obviously not the Harry Potter that y'all know. In Florida State Prison... Any white boy that has glasses, the nickname is Harry Potter. That's just how it goes. And there was even a time, if you don't know, I'm blind, where somebody called me Harry Potter. And I had to check him on that and tell him what to address me as. Because Harry Potter, for one, this is not somebody you want to be nicknamed after. And for two, the ones where I was at did not have good reputations. Especially the one that I was actually in the dorm with. Now, country... I spoke on him multiple times. He was an American Nazi at Appalachian Correctional. He ended up killing somebody at Senate Gate. He stabbed him in the neck. Dude bled out. And he was somebody that I was actually cool with. Like I've said before, we do not have segregation. You were going to be around every single gang. You were going to respect each other. Otherwise, y'all are going to go to war. So you will socialize with people you may not socialize with in different prison systems or even on the street. Country was from Tampa, he had a Buccaneers tattoo on him. We started speaking, whatever, whatnot, we got cool. Now, one thing that he hated was soft white boys. He hated it. He hated seeing soft white individuals, and that is why he had a respect for me, even though I was affiliating with other races, black, Spanish, y'all know I'm pushing blood. He respected it because he saw my heart was in it, and he saw that I had hot regardless of how the situation played out. Country started telling me about Harry Potter. Everyone knew that he was a jizzle and he was up under somebody that was from Orlando. When I say he's up under them, under them is a term for he's being extorted by, he's pretty much their property. The person that was extorting him had a life sentence, was barred from the courts, had nothing to lose, dude didn't give a fuck. He was mostly humble but obviously, you could expect that if you got into it with him, you would most likely get stabbed because there's no reason for him not to stab you. He has nothing to lose. And Harry Potter wasn't TOH to any shit like that. He welcomed being extorted. And he actually liked the person that was extorting him because he wasn't trying to rape him while other inmates were. Now, our dorm, where we were at in Appalachia, we were in I-4. I-1 had a bunch of dudes that got off of death row. The only way you go to death row is if you have a body. You got to kill somebody. So they had the death penalty. They got resentenced. They got life. They came to Appalachia. These dudes are booty bandits. They're crazy. They know they're never getting out, but they're happy to be on a regular compound again. So, you know, anything goes for them. They wanted Harry Potter. They wanted him. You know what I mean? They wanted to take advantage of him because he was young, he was small, he was like 5'3". He had a big ass head, he wore glasses. He was short as shit, he slept on the top bunk, he would have to double jump to get up there because, you know, if he jumps once and slips, he's gonna bust his ass. So he would jump once to make sure, jump twice to get on. Shit was funny as hell. And I'm not gonna lie, I bullied the shit out of Harry Potter. I fucked with him a lot because I didn't really know his charges. I assumed what they were. I assumed he was like a pedophile or some shit, you know what I mean? So, I gave Harry Potter hell when I was around him. But Country actually told me about his case. Harry Potter was in there for killing a female. I don't know if it was a girlfriend, an older woman, a younger child. I was just told he was in there for killing a female. And Country knew this because Country's friend was Harry Potter's bunkie. An unaffiliated white guy. Now, the murder isn't necessarily what surprised me. Um, because you got plenty of people that's in there for murder. But he said that Harry Potter went as far as dissecting the body, mutilating the body, playing with the insides. As he's telling me this, I can see Harry Potter. We were inside of the cell. He was in the fourth cell, and it faces the entire little dorm, the day room, you know what I mean? So I can see Harry Potter sitting at the table. He's got his little headphones in. He's just sitting with a couple of other jizzles. They're drinking coffee, whatever. 
And he's telling me that he cut the person open. He's playing with their guts. And I'm looking at him and I'm like, yeah, I could see that. You know what I mean? I thought he was on the other weirdo side, but it makes sense that he's got like a little Jeffrey Dahmer in him or whatever. You know what I mean? And um, that really wasn't the big surprise either to me. The surprise was his sentencing. Most likely he was either facing death or he was facing life. And he pled out to an insane amount of time. I don't remember exactly what it was. I'm thinking it was like 45 years. Because I can remember telling him at the table, he was a dumbass. Why would you plead out to 45 years and you're going to be 60 something, 70 something when you get out? That's a life sentence. You would have been better off going to trial, getting life, and having the chance of appealing it than pleading out the 40-something years or 50 years, however much time you got, and getting out when you're like 70 if you even live to make it that long. But I didn't have much sympathy for him because this is prison, and there's no room for sympathy in here. And country wanted him to redeem himself. Country actually wanted him to stand up for himself and kill the man that was extorting him. And Country went as far as having a conversation with Harry Potter. He presented a knife. He said, look, Saturday when we wake up, we're allowed to sleep in. The lights stay off. The cell doors are open. If you want to come out and listen to music, a shower, you can But you can stay asleep all the way until chow. And he told him on Saturday morning, you take this knife, you go into his room while he's sleeping, and you put it in his throat. You take both hands, you put it to his skin, and you push with your whole body until that knife is plunged all the way inside of his throat. You wiggle it around a little bit, you pull it out, repeat as many times as you can until he drops on the floor. You might as well. You have nothing to lose inside of here. You're not getting out for forever. You might as well gain an ounce of respect and be able to eat your food that your family is sending you instead of having to give him a portion. He wasn't extorted for all of his food. He was given food. He had a little radio and nobody took his ass. And he was comfortable with that. But country didn't like it. Country wanted him to kill the guy that was extorting him. Redeem yourself, white boy. Do something. Put metal in him. You already killed someone. You've crossed this line already. If you've taken life, why can't you take life again? And this is where the point of the story comes in. There is always somebody that is bigger and badder than you. You can be a full-blown killer There are killers that kill better than you. Fighters that fight better. Stabbers that stab better. Shooters that got better aim than you. And the thought process that we go through being young. That we have this sense of invincibility. That was one of the biggest wake up calls while I was inside of prison. Of course Harry Potter didn't catch the body. He didn't end up killing the dude. And you know country was willing to go behind him if he popped it off. But he wasn't willing to defend someone that isn't willing to defend himself. This is a perfect example of the bully becoming the bullied. Harry Potter killed a female. Victimized somebody that he knew he could victimize. Found himself in prison with a ridiculous amount of time with nothing to lose whatsoever nothing to lose and he became the victim and he didn't have the balls to kill his victimizer because it wasn't in him because he was an actual bully he could only victimize people under him but anything above him he didn't have the heart to handle it so country let him be and he continued to be extorted the guy that was extorting him went to confinement And Harry Potter was passed off to the next person. That's just how it goes. Anywhere he goes, he's going to be extorted. And if he falls under the wrong person, he's going to be used as a sex doll. And he's going to hate every single day that he is in prison, regretting the crime that got him in prison. And I don't know what the fuck is wrong with his brain. Because this kid used to get science magazines sent to the prison. He used to read 
Magazines on science. The only magazine in the dorm that nobody wants to fucking borrow. Whatsoever. No, who the fuck wants to read that shit? About atoms and particles and fucking like. He was just a weird kid. You could tell he was a nerd in school. And I don't know who he killed. But he was the softest killer that I ever met. And when country went and killed that other guy on the compound. It just gave everyone on the compound another wake up call. That realization just hit everyone in the face. We are in prison. You can lose your life any given day. None of us are invincible. And the fastest way to lose your life is living as if you are. Living as if you can't die. Living as if you can't get caught. But hey, it's 1090J. I'm rocking with y'all. Y'all rocking with me. Till next time.